God bless you. I am Dr. Lorella Meyer, and my co-host with me is Dr. Shaneri Ificho, lovely, lovely lady, and uh, Dr. Lorna Baldonado. They are prophetic, apostolic voices that God has chosen for this generation. And we're so excited because the word of the Lord says, in the last days, and we are at the end of the last days, because when Peter began to quote that scripture from the book of Joel, he thought it was then that the Lord was going to come back. But it was the beginning of eons of time, for God's timing is always perfect. You see, if it was at that time, you wouldn't have been born. You wouldn't have been thought of. But yet you are God's marvelous, marvelous creation. So in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. What does it mean? It means that God is going to quicken, make alive, that you would personally come to know this wonderful God who loves you and that he wanted to give you the gift of eternal life. How wonderful is that? And it means the resurrection of the church and God's supernatural power. With that, I'll turn to Amen. this wonderful co-host, uh, Dr. Ificho. Praise the Lord. This is awesome once again. The hour of quickening. You know, the first time in the book of Acts of Apostles, chapter 2, after the baptism of the Holy Spirit, when they had an encounter with the, the power of resurrection, the spirit of the living God, I say to you, this is the season, the hour of the Holy Spirit. This were men who were intimidated, men who were afraid, men who were in a dark world, men who had even, they were so afraid that they even denied the master. They ran for their lives. But when they had an encounter with the spirit of quickness, the spirit whose voice thunderates, you know, the voice of the Lord thunderates is so loud that it can sound all over the world. When the power of resurrection came and quickened them, they were able, they were enabled. And Peter stood and preached the gospel. He faced his fears. And the Bible says that 3,000 were added to the church in one day. Mm. What a time that we need the quickening of the Holy Spirit. But a time when we're faced with so much fear all over the world. Many are afraid of death. Many are afraid of everything. Some are even afraid of their shadows. But we come to say to you today that the spirit of the living God is here to quicken your mortal bodies again. So your flesh will cease to connect with fear. For fear brings torment. And when you're mm. tormented, you cannot have faith. This is the hour of faith. The Bible yes. says that even women received their dead husbands back to life because they had faith, not fear. So when you're faced with fear and when you're faced with death, know that the Holy Spirit, the spirit of quickness, is with you. You know, this is an hour that the Holy Spirit is moving upon us to move and walk in the supernatural power of God. Right. Everything that Jesus did, he did through the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. He came, he lowered himself, he operated as man. He was God-man, but he operated as man through the Holy Spirit. And today, we are in a time that we are going to see supernatural encounters. But mm. you see, you must have an encounter with the Holy Spirit Good. before you can even do an encounter. So what the Holy Spirit is speaking to us is to come Come into his presence. Take time every day to come into the presence of the living God. Take time to hear from him. Take time to listen and to know that God is raising up those that are walking in the, in the resurrection power. We have heard for many, many years, and we bring it back because there's many that haven't heard that Jesus died on the cross and that he resurrected. But what about the church? What about the church walking in resurrection power? Good. Resurrection means to come to life. You know, mm. when Jesus walked in resurrection power, he could walk through a wall. I'm not saying that we could walk through a wall, but we can see supernatural things. Mm. I'm telling you, God has done supernatural things. I have seen things that I've lost in my house appear. Yes. I prayed to God. I didn't know where they were. And all of a sudden, it appeared. Mm -hmm. I have been going to the store, and I thought I needed some money for a certain thing. I needed a certain amount. I look in my wallet. At first there was nothing. I look in my wallet again. It was there. 
Mm -hmm. because we are moving into a time of supernatural. We are going to be moving in a time and are in a time of angels. But Jesus said in John 6, 63, he said, my word is spirit and life. In other words, the word of God is written here. But once it comes inside of you, it's got to be established in you so that you understand it. But as it's established in you, the Holy Spirit will take your words. Now, I'm talking about people that walk with God. I'm talking about born-again people that walk with God. I'm talking about that we have the power through the Holy Spirit to speak and declare things to be, and it will be so. God says he wants to manifest signs, wonders, healings, and those things in this hour. You know, they didn't pass away with healing evangelists, they, and the evangelists of that hour didn't call themselves healing evangelists. The people did. Because why? They operated in healing. They operated in signs and wonders. People went to church with cancers. They left. They didn't go out and have a surgery. They left. And we are just stepping into the water. Stepping We're just right. stepping into the water of that. But believe me, there are some that are going to take quite a dip. Because there are more that are saying, you know what, I need to bring that water up, not just to my ankles, not just to my knees, but water to swim in. Mm -hmm. Lord, I want an encounter with you. Yes. Because he, it's not a one-time encounter of being baptized in the Holy Spirit. It's encounters. It's taking that time to come into his presence, hearing his voice and watching him manifest the things of God. We're in a supernatural time, and I believe that even in this time of darkness, we are going to see not only angels, we're going to see God's people rise up and begin to do exploits because it's been prophesied and prophesied that a people be risen up in this hour to do exploits and see signs and wonders to the glory of God because when you need something and it's not there, and you begin to pray to God. God can bring you anything. Ephesians 3.20, he'll do exceeding abundantly above all that you can even ask or think. I'm talking about things that you have need of. I'm talking about being able to, to go somewhere and you need the power of the Holy Spirit there. He will come in that moment. We are in a time of supernatural presence of the living God. The Holy Spirit is come to manifest Jesus. We'll be talking more about this on other programs. This is the hour of the Holy Spirit and the hour of the supernatural body of Christ being raised up to be that glorious church. As we begin to talk about the supernatural, when you are born again, your spirit that was dead becomes alive unto Christ Jesus. And you begin to walk in the heavenly we are not saved by works or by religion. No, it's by grace. By grace is mercy. His enduring power. By grace you are saved through faith. That not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Lest any man should boast. We can't save ourselves by giving to charity and feeding the poor and doing good works. No. Because that motivation is, unless it's connected to the Spirit of God, it really doesn't amount to anything. So I want to tell you that when you are born again, that is supernatural power beginning of, of your new life because you are resurrected by the Spirit of God. And so to be sure that supernatural power is working in your life, to give you a hope and an expected end that you can abide forever with the Lord. By whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved or delivered. And so pray with an open heart, with a, a heart of humility, and begin with all of your heart to pray this prayer. Jesus, dear Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of every sin. I'm so sorry I've sinned against you. Wash me in your blood. Write my name in the book of life and give me your wonderful Holy Spirit. Resurrect my spirit. I want to serve you. I want to live forever with you. And that is the beginning of resurrection power. And as our dear sisters was talking about the wonderful resurrection power of God, 
We see it right in the book of Acts. In Acts 3, there Peter and John, they had no money. How many of you have no money? But they had the Spirit of God, the supernatural power of God. And so they saw this, this man, lame man for years. He would be there at the temple begging. Now notice they went at the hour of prayer. So it is a people that are connected to the Lord with prayer, believing prayer, not repetitious prayer, but prayer with faith, talking to God with faith, knowing that he's there. And so, so they thought, this man thought, well, here's two men. Maybe they'll give me a coin. And you know what Peter said? Silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, give I thee that resurrection power, supernatural power, such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus. And you'll see how important that name is. And when you're water baptized also after being born again, you are given that name, the Lord Jesus Christ. And in that name, no other name, can we be saved or delivered. So rise up and walk. Do you know what that man did? The resurrection power of Jesus hit him. And there he rose up and shouted, and I would shout too, and just absolutely spread it abroad that Jesus is alive. He is alive. And so we just have another quick word from these wonderful ladies. You know, I was just looking at the book of Romans chapter 8. Mm -hmm. They said, there is now therefore no condemnation for them that are in Christ Jesus. But it's a key word there, who walk not after the flesh. It is time for us to return. Because the resurrection power of God can only walk in a body that is not the flesh. A quickened mortal body. Mm -hmm. Verse 9 says, but ye are not in the flesh, but the spirit. Right. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. Mm -hmm. But the Amen. spirit of life because of righteousness. It is the hour that God is calling the church back to righteousness. Mm -hmm. We must put on the right garment. There was a man called Zechariah the high priest. In the book of Zechariah chapter 3, we know what happened to him. When it was time for him to move to the next level, he thought he had consecrated himself. But there was something that was lacking, that was missing. We call him the Holy Spirit. He needs a vessel that is holy. If he must be, fulfilled, I mean, be used or he must use you fully, he must manifest the fullness of the Godhead. God is holy. And without holiness, no man can see God. Right. It is time for us to come out from where we are, come out from sin. Come on from those things that so easily besiege us. Come on from those things we have taken carelessly. So many of us have become careless with the things of this race. We believe that once born again, born again. No, once born again is not born again. He said, who walks not after the flesh, but after the spirit. The spirit of God to manifest in the fullness and for us to operate in the supernatural power of God. The vessel must be prepared to carry the supernatural God in him. The supernatural spirit of God in him. Look at the lives of the apostles. For them to manifest the power of God that they manifest the grace, the great grace that they manifested in, they submitted themselves, they walked the work. They did not just talk the talk. Mm -hmm. Men saw them, looked at them, watched them, interacted with them. And the first time they were called Christians was in Antioch because they spent about three years there in Antioch and people saw that they were really like Christ and they said, these are Christians. Mm -hmm. God is calling the church back to that time because we're right now in the book of Isaiah chapter 60. It said, gross darkness will cover the earth. It said, rise and shine for the light is come. That light is the resurrection power of God. He's looking for who to reside in. Right. He's looking for a vessel to possess, to overshadow. Just like the Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary and the holy thing was incubated and Christ mm -hmm. came. The Holy Spirit is moving again. It said, mm -hmm. arise and shine for the light is come. Mm -hmm. The glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. It's specific. The glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. But there is a criteria to that which I have said. Behold, the darkness shall cover the whole earth and gross darkness the people that were seen everywhere. Then the Gentiles shall come to thy light. And the kings to the brightness of their rising. For the church to emerge in this time, we we'll call it the measures of the sons of God. They are the sons that carry the light of God. Amen. We are going to be that light. Christ is not here. He told us greater works shall we do because of the Holy Spirit. 
the more we come close to him, the more we walk in the spirit, the more the light gets brighter. Amen. The more you don't have to preach much, the more the supernatural, the more you manifest all the creative ability of God. You take dominion. You have the power that was given to Adam and Eve in the garden. God is calling you and I. This is the time for us to arise and shine. For Amen. his light has come. Amen. You know, because people today are looking for the presence of Jesus Christ. They're not looking for religion. No. They're not looking for these. And more important than a sign and wonder is the very presence of the Lord. His presence. The presence of the Lord is what touches somebody that's not saved that they want Jesus. The presence of the Lord is what touches somebody that's mm. struggling to walk with God. The presence of the Lord comes and they release whatever it is that was holding them back and they just come. There's something about the presence of God that can give you power and empower you in the weakest time of your life. Apostle Paul knew that. He said, when I am weak, he is strong. He said, let, let, let the saints, he said, when, when you're poor, say you're, you're, you're rich. He turned everything around because he knew one thing, that it was only by the presence of God. You can't change yourself. You can't empower mm -hmm. yourself. You can't even get good enough, but mm -hmm. you can yield. You can say, Lord, here I am. Use me for your glory. Amen. Fill every part, Lord God. The, the things that are in me that I don't want, Lord, I thank you that you change me from faith to faith and glory to glory. And God, he is a master builder. He's the greatest teacher. The Holy Spirit's the greatest teacher. And Jesus Christ, the master builder, he's building a temple in you. And he will change those things as you cannot change. So today I pray. I pray for you. Father, I pray for those yes. that are struggling, those that Jesus. feel that they can't get good enough. He wants you to know that he has come in power and authority to touch and change your life. It is by the presence of the Lord. In Jesus' name, God bless you. So when Peter and John walked by that temple, that man sensed something, that these men were different. And so when the word of the Lord came out of Peter's mouth to say, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I you, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And so... We are nothing. Ministers of the gospel, all three of us, we have an education in God that the Lord has graciously given us doctor's degrees. But however, that's not the most important thing. The most important thing is the resurrection power of God for we were at times broken vessels. And so the Lord came to us and our spirit was able to rise up and he began to train us and teach us. And so for you, we say, are you struggling with illness right now? In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Has drugs and addiction and alcohol been the bondage of hell that has gripped you? In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, be delivered and healed. Rise up and walk. A broken relationship, marriages, perhaps your spouse has walked out on you. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. He loves you so much that if you were the only person on the face of this earth, he would have come to die for you. That's how much he loves you, that you can have resurrection life. So I'm Dr. Lorella Meyer. This is the Word of His Kingdom. My wonderful co-host, Dr. Ificho and uh, Dr. Lorna Baldonado, Shaneri. Sometimes I don't always pronounce her name correctly. But we are so glad you have tuned in because it's our heart's desire to see that you move in His love and in His resurrection power. For in His love, the fruits of the Spirit will begin to develop, to develop. You'll become like Jesus, and God can use you. And then the miraculous power, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. God loves you, and we love you. That's the way it's going to be. God loves you, 
and we love you. And that's for the world to see. We also want to thank Cross TV and the wonderful staff that operates this wonderful, wonderful TV station that the word can go on seven satellites. And to all the nations of the earth, we love you. And if you are interested in furthering your knowledge of the Lord, then indeed University on the Air dot org www.universityontheair.org in Jesus name. Amen.